Hello again and welcome to the 140k Imperial Guard video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a big thank you to Zachary Samuel Lander for sending in some awesome pictures of his restored Cadians. Absolutely love the desert colour scheme. I'm a big fan of the mixture of old school Cadian models and I think I even inspired Cheeky Mordian Officer in there as well. Really a man after my own heart, really just impressed with how uh, great a job you've done the restoration of these old models, Zach. So uh, thank you for sending these pictures in. If anyone else has got any cool pictures they'd like me to use in my videos, then please post them on my Facebook page or you can email them directly to me at Morning Glory TV. And don't worry if you've accidentally been uh, hit over the head by the Commissar one too many times and you can't remember anything, there is a link down in the description below and my email address is down in the description below as well. Uh, one last thing to mention guys is, and I'm trying to do this a bit more, I do have a Patreon page. I don't monetize any of my videos. I try to have as few adverts as possible. Everything on the channel is funded by my awesome Patreon supporters. So if you like what I do here and want to chuck a couple of dollars at me, that would be greatly appreciated. And just to be totally honest, there's no levels or anything like that. I don't do this channel to, to make any money. I do it because I enjoy it. And it's simply a case of all the money that is given uh, to, to the Patreon page gets re reinvested directly into the channel. So it goes towards events when, you know, when we can go to events, new terrain, new cameras, new models, new armies, it all goes back into the channel. Anyway, that's enough shameless plugging from me. Let's get on with today's video because I do have a pretty mad conspiracy theory, guys. So get your tinfoil hats out, subscribe to Infowars.com and you know, hide under the, uh, under the stairs so the 5G network can't pick you up because we're going down conspiracy theory lane today and there's only one stop and that is crazy town. What am I talking about? Let's get into it now. So what is this mad theory? What's going to get me investigated by the old Commissar and the Inquisition? Well, I have a theory, and I just want to make it absolutely clear. I know I'm building it up, guys, hyping it up, but bear with me. I have a theory, and it's only a theory, and this is not backed up by any rumour or anything whatsoever. So it's just a mad idea. And it could be totally wrong, okay? But... In a really messed up way, it kind of makes sense that they're going to do this, right? So I have a theory for the new guard codex. Specifically, I have a theory for what sort of turn-by-turn -turn advantage they're going to give us. Now, what do I mean by turn-by-turn -turn advantage? Well, if you look at the other armies that are out there that have been released with, like, 9th edition, many of them, we're not talking, like, Space Marine supplements, we're talking the standalone armies, M nearly all of them, have got some kind of turn by turn advantage. So Marines and all the iterations of Marines have combat doctrines. You start off in uh, you know, the, the Devastator Doctrine, then you can move to the Tactical Doctrine, then to the, the Assault Doctrine, right? And, it's, and you have some control over that. You some, sometimes you have to shift, sometimes you don't, but by and large, as the game progresses, you get a different buff or you get a buff, right? Necrons, a little different. They're like, they've got like programming, but they still have what I would call a turn by turn buff. A TBTB, or we'll just call it TBT for simple, turn by turn. Okay. Their, ter their turn by turn is command protocols. You write down what protocols you want to be in and what turn, and then as the turns progress, you pretty much have to advance from one protocol to the next, right? Uh, that's the pre-program, that's the floppy disk you've put into the back of your Necron Warrior's head. Uh, that's what he's going to do. And there are some people who can, you know, quickly nip in and change floppy disks over and influence the command protocols. But by and large, you know, that's your turn-by-turn -turn buff. You know, Marines have it in a set order. Necrons have a bit of, uh, like, flexibility. But at the same time, once you've written it down, you've got to stick with that. Um, Death Guard. Plague Marines. They have a turn-by-turn -turn buff, which is their Contagions. As the turns go on, the contagion it's the same buff, but it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The, the, you know, the, the area of effect for your pestilence and plague and for, your, for the common cold that's spreading everywhere changes turn by turn. Now, Dark Elder, we don't know yet, but we do know that it'll probably be an extension of Power from Pain. They'll probably get Power from Pain overhaul. They already have it. Whereas the turns go on, they get an additional buff. Dark Elder are kind of like the OGs for this. So that's cool. They're like the guinea pigs that they got it in eighth and now everyone's getting it. But what could guards turn by turn buff be? 
what's similar to command protocols, but similar to combat doctrines, what is the guard famous for? Orders. The order system. So I've spent three minutes here laying the groundwork, and now I'm going to hit you with my mad theory, which is... I think there could be a possibility that the guard order system gets totally reworked. I think that it could be instead of orders being something that I issued, orders are something that you give to your men before the game starts and that that is the, and as that becomes our turn by turn buff. Okay, I think that's what could happen. I could be totally wrong here, guys. This is, this is, like I said, this is an Alex Jones, you know, turning the frogs gay level of conspiracy theory. And if you haven't seen that video, please go and Google it. It's hilarious. But this is, <laughs> uh, this is, this is, you know, 5G network level of conspiracy theory. I could be totally wrong. But let me, let me talk you through my reasoning. So from a fluff perspective, the guard is seen as this kind of really inflexible thing, right? Uh, and that, you know, often generals will, it even says in the fluff, like, sometimes orders will come through and the commissar will make sure those orders are executed at, the, at gunpoint, even if they've, like, come from the warp and they're all garbled and they totally don't make sense that it leads to them losing the campaign. It doesn't matter. Orders are always followed, right? But if you actually look at how orders are currently implemented, orders do the opposite of that. Orders provide guard with a great deal of tactical flexibility. So you've got this, this fluff disconnect with, the rea with reality, right? The fluff is guard follow orders to the letter and they are, it's a slow, cumbersome machine and it's inefficient, but they have their orders and they always follow them. And then you've got the tabletop, which is orders are issued on the fly and they're really, you know, they, they're, very, you know, they're really adaptive and they, they allow you to be way more efficient. So how, you know, that's like a disconnect, right? That's weird. So that's one justification for it. Second justification for it is, and I mean, I can't see another, I actually don't know what else they could do to have a guard like turn by turn thing. Like it kind of does make sense in a messed up kind of way. And by the way, I want to be clear, I'm not I'm not hoping that they do this. I think it could be really, really like a big blow to the guard. But I'm saying it kind of makes sense that they would do it. Because, you know, the guard again is meant, you know, the space room is meant to be tactically flexible. The guard are kind of meant to be the opposite of that. The guard are meant to be like the officers we see, you know, and obviously we're talking generally here, there are some really flexible units and that would have to be represented in each regiments like regimental doctrine for example but um but you know the guard by and large they're kind of like a world war one world war two army at the very best they use modern tactics but a lot of a lot of them don't a lot of the guard regiments don't so you know world war one especially at the beginning what used to happen is guard officers would receive their orders and they would just have to carry them out they had they were given their bit of the plan and they had to go and do it. And obviously, it depends on which army you're in. I think the Germans are really good at decentralized command, and the British and French are a bit more like, do your orders, duh! Um, but, you know, in theory, you know, that's how the guard would operate. There's this massive battle, and the and the local commander just receives his packet of orders, and off he goes, and he has to enact them. And if he doesn't, he gets blown, you know, gets his head blown off by the local commissar. So it's kind of like a fluff justification for it as well. Um, another reason, though, I'm thinking this, is that there's a lot of people that complain about guard orders at the moment. I know, totally mad, but like a bottom tier army, yet people still manage to shit on us. It's just, pfft, you never please some people. You give in to the angry mob, you never, you know, you never, you know, they're never satisfied, are they? It's like a general rule of life. Um, and so there are some people that say guard orders uh, are too, like, they're too powerful. Like the fact that, and in some ways I do kind of get it, like, because... Guardsmen are really, really fast. Thanks to Move, 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 Guardsmen can move faster than jet bikes, which I kind of get doesn't make sense. Um, but then you've got Gene Steelers, which in theory can move faster than airplanes. So here we are, it's 40k, doesn't have to make sense, right? You don't know what my Guardsmen ate for breakfast. They might have all been having like Panzer chocolate. I don't know. Anyway, um, so the point is that I think there are some people that complain about guard orders and they would want guard to not have them the way they are now and instead they'd want them to be this totally reworked army-wide turn-by-turn buff. So 
that's kind of like my theory on it, like why they might do it. One, it makes sense from the fluff. Two, how else do you sort of implement a turn-by-turn -turn buff for the guard? And three, it would satisfy a lot of, it would bring guard in line with a lot of, with how they're doing it for the other armies and would probably silence, well, at least silence some of the traditional complaints people have had around the old Astra Militarum and the way their orders work. People who don't play the faction don't understand that without orders, we're literally flipped. You know, trying to keep the old language down. We're literally cover your child and children's ears fucked, you know. So, yeah, I think that's there's, there's that. Now, 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 now. What, what could this do? What, how could they, what orders could we have? Well, I think you could just look at the ones we currently have. And they could probably pretty much be adapted, right? I mean, some of them are actually kind of cool. So if we look at the current orders, you know, the first one is take aim. Reroll hit rolls of one for all models in the ordered unit until the end of the phase. Well, imagine if just for one turn you just got an army wide. You know, you got to imagine you had it like the Necron system where you get to choose what um in what order you do your orders, order, order. What what order in what sort of there's another word for it, is there? In what order do you have your buffs? You could do it like the um, like the Necron. So you could, you know, the first one could be take aim. So your whole army for one turn gets to reroll ones. Reroll hit rolls of ones for the models. And yeah, that could be it. Just the whole army for one turn gets reroll ones. Okay, that's kind of cool. I get it. Like, it's not as tactically flexible. That's a simple one, right? That's really, that's just, that literally translates over instantly first rank fire second rank fire now that's a tricky one you know it, all las guns and all hot shot in the ordered unit change their type to rapid fire two until the end of the phase but again imagine if that just applied to your whole army for one turn that's again still very much easily easily ported over easily translated over from the current system into this new turn by turn army wide buff system Bring it down, same thing. Reroll re rolls of one for all models in the ordered unit until the end of the phase. There you go. It's another buff, translates straight over. Forwards for the Emperor. The ordered unit can shoot this phase even if it advances its movement phase. Easy. Do that, that would be one you put in your turn one, wouldn't it? Again, straight away, this just translates straight over to an army wide buff. Your whole army can still shoot even if it advances for one turn. Cool. Get back in the fight. The ordered unit can shoot this phase even if it fell back in its movement phase. That's a trickier one. It still totally translates over, but it doesn't quite fit as well. That because you're not always going to be like falling back and whatnot. So that one, whilst it does totally translate over, isn't as clean as the other ones. Move, move, move. You can move again in the shooting phase, but you must advance. Again, that, that does translate over very easily. So for one turn, you must move in advance, and in your shooting phase, you may choose to move in advance again. Every unit in your army can do that. Well, that's gonna be a bit of a tricky one. For like turn one, your whole army has to move in advance. That'd be pretty crazy. I mean, you could have it where it was like, you could choose to do it. But then that kind of in a funny sort of way doesn't, work because it's an order you have to obey your order so imagine if turn one all you leave must have to move in advance <laughs> that'd be so mad that'd be so terrible but it would show it would kind of represent everyone like boiling out the trenches over the top kind of thing <laughs> it's funny though and then the last one fixed bayonets you can fight in the shooting phase basically again it's not as clean but it does translate over so now bearing in mind there's only five turns, so either you could have this thing where you pick, you've got seven orders and you pick which five you want to be. So you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't get all seven in the game, you pick five of seven. Or you get rid of fixed bayonets because that doesn't quite work and you get rid of get back in the fight and that doesn't because that's not as clean and the other five translate over perfectly. You know, the other one of them is you can, you can move, you can advance and shoot. One of them is you can move and advance and move and advance. You know, that, they're two great first turn ones. You know, bring it down, standard. Take aim, standard. First one, fire, second one, fire, fine. There's loads of, loads of stuff you could have going on there. 
So it's pretty crazy when you think about it, but it does kind of work. And then it also kind of works for the custom, about the custom regiments. Because, I mean, I won't go through them all, but like, the point is, is that each custom regiment, let's say, let's say they go with the, the, with the first option I chose, so like the seven, and you can pick which seven go into your order packet that's distributed to your forces before the battlefield, before the battle starts. And if you're a, if you're a, not a custom regiment, if you're a regiment of renown, if you're like a Acadian, a Catachan, or a Valhallen, blah, 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 you've got an additional order you can put in your order packet that can, um, you can choose. So you've got eight options instead of seven, or you get, or if you're like Cajun, you get tactical flexibility. If you're modern, you get the opposite of tactical flexibility, but maybe you get some other kind of buff to make up for it. Um, say in Militarum Tempestus, maybe Militarum Tempestus would have their own unique set of orders to represent, you know, that they, they are tactical, they are, they are on the fly and they just pick at the beginning of each turn what buff they want that turn and they get to pick it at the point of like mid game. That would be cool. Yeah. Anyway, that's my mad theory. Bit of a weird, bit of a weird one. Bit of a strange video, not not a usual video, you know, not, not, not so much a tactics video, but more, uh, I guess, like I said, more of a conspiracy theory, but more than that, more of a wager, more of a bet. So you know what would be really interesting? The Guard Codex is going to get released in the next 12 months, hopefully. I mean, God, it's longer than that. Pfft. But let's say the Guard Codex gets released in the next 6 to 12 months. I'm hoping summer, but it could be longer than that. But let's say the Guard Codex gets released in the next 6 to 12 months. It would be very funny to come back and look at this video with the benefit of hindsight. And maybe we'll come back and look at it and it'll be like, God, what a knob. He was so wrong. Games Workshop didn't do anything like that. Or maybe we'll look back and go, God, like he was so on it. Like he, he guessed it. He, he, he pierced, you know, he saw the GameStop stop, you know, he bought GameStop at one dollar kind of thing. <laughs> maybe it's that level of recognition. I don't know. It's probably going to be the former though. It's probably going to be, God, what a, what a tit. Like that was definitely not what they were going to do. But it'd be interesting if, if they, what do you think of that idea? Firstly, what do you think of that idea? Secondly, do you like it or do you think it's terrible? And thirdly, do you have any other inklings or ideas what they may give to guard for a turn by turn buff? If we were going to get one, but let's assume we will for a moment. What turn by turn buff do you think? Theorycraft, Fanhammer, what do you think we should get as a turn by turn buff? Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and of course, I'll see you guys next time.